this is what we shoot. Uh, you guys weren't allowed to see this. Are you allowed to see this? The super secret side. Super, super, secret. super extra double secret side. Yes, and please return them at the end when we finish the scene. Oh, goodness. Others have asked um, if they can even look at the scene yet, which I don't know if I, I said, I'll, you know, start with them, I'll show it to you in mine, but I don't know if you want to even wait until we I think it's there. okay. That's kind of interesting. This has to be collected at the end of shooting this evening. Please do not leave them unattended at any time. Thank you for your cooperation. Danny dies during childbirth. You're not supposed to tell him. Unbelievable. I'm selling these on eBay. Then I'm gonna get in trouble. Don't mess up. And ruin the episode. Don't mess up. Sean, how do you how do you expect me to be able to concentrate like up. this? What are you doing to me? This is gonna be the season finale. We've been getting a lot of attention so far this year about you know how this is all gonna turn out for Vic and his team. Um, and this is a huge plot development. It's not the biggest uh, secret spy plan the world ever devised. <laughs> and those shows that go to more efforts than us. You know, we've pretty much put most of our efforts into writing, producing, directing, and editing the show. But we're gonna try and make an effort, uh, you know, in the seven weeks before we film until we air to try to keep this as low key as possible. We've decided to call the actors who are gonna get the script a little early and, and give them a heads up and, and ask them to help us maintain the secrecy. I think they were frankly worried how we might react. Glenn Mazzara called and said, if we've got news of the script and it affects the death of a major character in the show. I didn't get a call, I got a note, because I was on the last scene, so I got a note. And it said, call Glenn Mazzara. And I was like, fuck. And I thought, <laughs> what's going on? Why are you calling me at home? And the first thing I thought was, did, did I sign all my contract? I said, are you firing me? And uh, he said, well, you're close. I definitely flashed back to the, how expendable we are as actors, you know, for the sake of the story, you know. I mean, it was traumatic. It, it, was, it was absolutely traumatic. I mean, it's just a kick in the gut. We couldn't deny the sort of brilliance of it in terms of the storytelling. I was blown away. I was shocked. You saw on their faces like they had lost a part of themselves with the loss of this character and the loss of this actor. His death is a, is a unique opportunity to sort of stab at the heart of what the show is. He's the guy you really care about. It's a perfectly horrifying result that, that Lem, who is a sort of, you know, Christ in this show, is the one that, that ends up being crucified. Let me in in my way. <laughs> I did it my way. You have a lead character. Even when they get into trouble, there's a sense of safety when you're watching because this is like the guy that's in the show. He's going to be okay. You can't do, no one, you don't do that on TV, you know? And that's what The Shield is. We do things on TV that other, you just don't, you, you, you can't fathom them happening. I love the fact that there are repercussions and ultimately your past is going to catch up to you. But then you go, but not. Or I went not Lim, but then not him, but then you go, well, then who? We all deserve it. He just deserves it less. How are we going to kill him? Yeah. It's tragic. It's tragic. The closer it gets, the more, you know, I think, like, no, nah, I don't really want to go. He really is the conscious of it, and, and he's the one that's got to fall. Yeah. He's going to die. That's fucked up. The way these writers do, and, and the things that are in Sean's head and in these writers' heads, I mean, I'm, I'm glad it's me, you know? I'm glad I'm taking my buddy out, you know? And, and that's, that feels good. If, it, if anybody had to do it, I'm glad it wasn't anybody else's hands, it's my hands. And that's a, that's a, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. Guys inside? He's not here yet. Where is he? He's already half an hour late. Don't be here. Okay. He didn't leave a message. 
Hey, listen. If I were going to prison for 18 months, I wouldn't be in a rush either. I'll be here. What? <coughs> That's our land. It says kind of Lovely. sitting on the stairs, which is kind sitting of on the cool. Stairs sitting on the stairs. That was good sitting on the stairs, oh, man. Yeah. Hey, hey, thank you. That's nice, man. <laughs> yeah, because it was like other guys would sit on the stairs all funny and like fall over and shit. Yeah. Yeah. All right, let's, let's get cameras and shoot. All right, lightning. This is the nicest location we've ever yeah. shot in. Yes, yeah. straight up. It very we didn't have well, to, we didn't and have this to was, And this and the other one we looked at, was nicer. This was the down it was just one. Too nice. Yeah, yeah, we went. We went. This is the nicest location we've ever been at on the shield. Yeah, this is the cleanest, certainly. <laughs> so there you have it. Oh, show. So I found out in a roundabout manner, but shortly after finding out, I I called Sean and told him that I knew. You know, I felt like I needed to actually have a talk with the people in the on the set and say, look, you know, in honor of and in deference to Kenny Johnson. We need to be quiet here. We need to really, you know, and I'll take personal great offense of anyone saying anything outside of our walls because the more people that know outside of the cocoon, the more the, the impact of this will be lessened. It'll be weakened. And we, you know, in honor of Kenny and what's happening with this character, we really want to maximize that. We really want it to have the maximum impact that it can have on the audience. So I think that, you know, being as familial as we are, being a tight, tight group, uh, everybody responded very well and, and is uh, banding together for Kenny's sake. It's an easy read. Thank you very much. We came up with the idea of Lemonhead dying um, via Shane's hand in a very tragic way. Um, early, literally, like in that first two, three weeks that we would come in at the beginning of the season and break story and figure out what we're going to do. You know, and we knew. We didn't know all the specifics, but we knew we wanted there to be, we, we knew we wanted the team to be in trouble and to think that maybe Lem was going to rat on them. We knew Lem wouldn't rat. Um, it's not in his character. But we thought Lem's not going to do it, at least not in the story we want to tell and as far as we're going to take it. Shane, on the other hand, is way too much of a coward to, to not rat. So we thought it would be interesting if if Shane sort of projected his own sort of weaknesses and fears into Lem and thought when Lem got, well, Lem's going to go to jail, therefore he's going to rap because I would rap. And then just kind of look out the door and then go? Yeah. OK. We as writers started working in July, and I think it was sometime in July or early August that you know we settled on this, this long-term storyline that would result um, in Shane killing Lem. It was a big decision. You know, we had played with, uh, with the idea of, of it last season uh, with actually uh, uh, another character. And, uh, and I won't mention who the character was, but we were a hair away from pulling the trigger on that. Last year we had a scene where Vic pulled the gun on Shane and he felt that he should kill Shane. And, and we had a lot of debates on whether or not he should do that. Yeah, we almost offed Walton Walt yeah, last yeah. year. And I don't think anybody knows that. <laughs> but, so Walton, if you're watching it, oops. But, the thing was, it's interesting to have that Vic was the one who killed Terry, and that twisted Shane up. And then Vic shows mercy on Shane, and yet Shane is sort of the monster now yeah, that, he's the that, Vic that, has, created. that Vic has created, and he is unable to show the mercy that Vic showed him. So it's just, you know, if you connect those scenes, this comes directly out of the pilot with that scene that we thought could have been a jump the shark moment. Turns out to be a pivotal scene in this arc, which we didn't know that at the time. Set. Set. And action! Kavanaugh is here all morning. And, and then this season, it's sort of organically, the way it was spinning out, um, you know, with Lem sort of being on the hook, uh, it sort of made sense to, uh, to land there with, uh, with the killing of Lem. We, we had the advantage of not knowing we were going to earn his, his Lemonhead's death, so we didn't have, we basically just kept it a secret uh, amongst ourselves because 
we didn't know if it was going to happen or not. We did have on our board, we have a, a board that lists all the episodes and sort of just, you know, things that are going to happen. And we always wrote it from day one. We wrote, uh, Shane delivers Danny's baby, sort of like our code sentence for killing Lem. And it was always up there. And, the, and sometimes the actors would pop in, you know, and they'd see it and they had no idea what it meant. And we, Danny was pregnant, so I think they all thought it, we, literally Shane was going to deliver Danny's baby. He's tiny. Oh, George is so much littler. Amazing what a pound can do. My baby right now is, um, he'll, be, he'll be nine weeks on Wednesday. Oliver. He's a real sweet. He's twice his size and two weeks younger. <laughs> That's why he, didn't, he couldn't play this part, because he's too big. Typical Hollywood, right? You're too big. I mean, technically, they pretty much had to write the pregnancy and You can't have a cop on the street who's pregnant. And I couldn't, it's not like you could have hidden it because of my body. You know, I was nine months pregnant. Um, so you can't put a Sam Brown on and have a gun and pretend like it's not, you know, there. But I think that the writers really enjoy sort of tapping into our own psychology and our own um, anxieties and neuroses. And they, they're very attuned to that, to us personally. And I think they actually like to play on that and write those into the show. When he's old enough and he asks, I'm going to tell him. But for now, I just... When he's old enough. Uh, I'm working on something. I figured I'd at least stop by. Okay. Actually, right when I found out, or right the day before I found out, um, was the day that Walt found out. And, um... Walt is a very, um, well, they make jokes that Walt's a big method actor and he's always sort of, you know, getting into his part and stuff. But, but this day he was especially withdrawn and I don't know, I didn't know what was going on. And then when I found out what he had to do and what his role in the next episode was, I knew that that's, he was having a really shitty day. I don't, know what meth, I don't know what method means, you know. I mean, at the end of the day, it's, this is, you know, I'm not really killing Kenny. You know, he's my friend and he's been my friend for a long time. Um, but, but in order for, for me to enjoy this experience as an actor, as an artist, I, I don't want to talk to the craft service people beforehand. Well, that's no fun for me. I didn't, I didn't show up to work to do that. I showed up to do my job. So if, if, if being a method act, I, I think it's about playing pretend at the end of the day. And so in order for me to play pretend, uh, I, I want to be in the head frame of, of where this person's coming from. I don't know that that's method. I think that's just enjoying the process of playing pretend. Um, whereas, you know, Michael is is can laugh and joke and and and, and do his thing and then turn it on and kind of go right into it. For me, I, I like to simmer in it. You know, I want to see what it feels like. Um, and and I've noticed like Forrest Whitaker does the same thing. He doesn't talk a lot. I mean, he's very cordial and very very kind. And, 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 you know, it says, and he's very kind of quiet and will talk to you when you talk to him. But for the most part, he's, he's in his head, you know? And, and I don't know that he, I don't think that when I look at him, I'm like, ah, that's a method actor. I just look at a guy that's, oh, wow, okay, you're getting ready to, uh, try to arrest people that, that you think have done a crime. Go for it, man. <laughs> you know? And I'll be the guy that's supposedly doing the crime. Action. And that's, that's, that's how I like to roll. Like, be my... What's this? this is your former CI says she's got some information on those demolished DEA cars. Well, give it to the feds. We don't want her. I tried. She only wants to talk to you. Kavanaugh cut me loose, Vic. I'm not working for him no more. What? Now that you stabbed one of my guys with an indictment? Now you need another PD tit to suck on? It's, it's, it's real good intel. Look, it's not my dime. Your call. So I think the main focus is going to be how do you bring the big cheese down? And that's the Vic Mackey character. So sometimes the, the satellite characters around him kind of get forgotten because people want to know how can he still get away with it? How can he still come out, you know, unscathed yet again? And to see someone within the circle get it, to me, has the same reaction as when um, Acevedo got raped. Thousands of women have been raped 
in storylines, but this male rape represented something far greater and had a much more effect, much more conversation of people talking about the violation of a man. So when you see the, the satellite around Mackie getting taken down in such a way, um, then you realize that it is the beginning of the dismantling of a man who has been fortified by these henchmen and soldiers of his. And so when he starts to remove his own fortress, then there's some kind of seepage that's going to happen. So. so we're parking here. Out you go. Look, they're walking. Everybody watching them. Check out what's happening. There you go. Wow. Woo! Yeah, baby. You can't teach that shit. You can't. You gotta do. I can do that. You can't coach you. Swag, buddy. You can't coach it. You either got it or you don't. I was on set a few years ago when we released a script in which uh, the David character was raped. And the crew really takes this stuff too hard. They were devastated. How can you guys do that to Benny? I'm like, and I said, well, no one's doing anything to Benny. He plays a character <laughs> named David, and that's what we've written. And so, so, and, and you know, Cece told me I was godless at the time. So, <laughs> so we yeah. get accused of that pretty much every week. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So the thing was, um, and everybody came around and embraced that story. But it does have an impact on the actors, on the crew, on everybody. It's horrible for one thing. You know, I mean. When we're sitting in the room talking about whether or not to do this, it's obviously, it's much bigger than just, okay, are we gonna kill Lem? It's, you know, we all love Kenny so much. Not having Kenny on the set every day is so, you know, it's such a huge bummer. It's a huge loss not to, like, just kind of be hanging out with them, right? Um, and not to have Lem's character. Exactly. Who was the moral center of the strike team. Exactly. So you're also you're thinking about loss. So, yeah. yeah. On a storytelling basis, killing him posed problems because A, he was sort of the moral center of the group. And B, you know, you just it, the same way he sort of would light up a room when when you would hang out with him on the set before you were shooting, he did sort of the same thing in the scenes. He just added an extra layer that felt like you gotta have him you gotta have him in the show. So it was it was an incredibly difficult thing, and essentially what we decided is, from day one, it was, all right, we're going we're gonna to kill this guy off. But, as Sean, Sean basically said, only if, by the time we get to that last episode, we've earned it. Um, so, you know, we, didn't, we, we were almost trying not to earn it, which was very interesting. And I, don't, and I think Sean was doing everything he could not to earn it. And we, um, the pieces just fell into place, and it just, you know, we got there. And we, we hated doing it, and um, it was one of the hardest things we've ever done. Ultimately, what it came down to is what we got from it. You know, it, it, it gave us so much to play yeah. and enriched, you know, the dynamics of the show in so many ways that it ended up, you know, in the balance, it was worth it. But it's, it's very hard to kind of make those decisions. So that's how we sort of ha handled it there. And then what happened was, as soon as Sean made the decision uh, to kill Lem, uh, Kenny was told. When I found out, I think, uh, you know, as, uh, well, I won't, I won't get into how I found out, but I, I, I was, felt like I got hit in the gut, you know, I just like the, the wind knocked out of me, you know, like in that stun for a moment, you know, and I drove home and I didn't tell anything to my girlfriend. Uh, and, I mean, and I walked in the house and I was trying to be okay and then I just kind of collapsed crying. I guess it just overwhelmed me for a minute. And then uh, I kind of got up and thought about it and uh, thought about, you know, you know, all, all, all the, I guess, wonderful storylines they've given me this season and the build of my character. And, and I kind of just thought, and I kind of got why they were doing it creatively and, and, and what great stories that it could end up, um, you know, having for the, the next 10 episodes. And on a creative level, I thought, well, when we started out on The Shield, everybody was about the creativity, and, and, and the show was so edgy and, and you know, dangerous in, in many respects for what was on television at that time that, you know, I, 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 want, you know, I wanted Landgraf and Sean and everybody to kind of stay true to what we were about from the beginning. So uh, I thought about it, and I thought, actually, it's a pretty genius idea. Oh,
I know at the beginning for the pilot, I, I was cast as a recurring person. And before they started shooting, uh, they kind of approached me because I think they saw some energy between Michael Walton and myself that just sort of worked, really, you know, jumped for whatever reason on TV. And it just, and so for whatever reason they off offered, well, thank God they offered me a, a series regular. So I think Sean probably didn't know exactly what he was going to do, you know? So I just did what I always do is just do a ton of uh, <laughs> my own history, my own background, and, and hopefully just add some colors to what we were doing and what Sean was writing. And, you know, it just came off as somebody I, that obviously had a conscience, you know? So I just kind of had it affect me more maybe than some of the others, you know? So what is a team without a conscience? I don't know. I don't know. I, I have no, I have no idea where it's gonna go. I know that there's that there's pain ahead on a level that we've never faced before. Real sincere pain, I do know that. In whatever direction they take it in, but but the outcome, I have no idea. <laughs> Mr. Long for the ride. You know, I should have seen it coming. Uh, I mean, the whole catchphrase for this season is "Conscience is a killer." And uh, Kenny's character of Lemonhead has been the conscience of the strike team throughout. And it just made perfect sense. However, you know, heartbreaking. Also, I can't think of another person in the cast who would make more of an impact in his passing. And that's not to slight any of my, my fellow cast members. It's just that Ken happens to be the, sort of the heart and soul of the strike team. Hi guys. Hi. What's up guys? Morning. What's your name? Leah. Leah Kenny. Hi. Good to meet you. What's Quincy. your name? Quincy? Yeah. Good. I'll be acting with you guys today, so let's have a good time. Let's have a good time. At first you guys are scared of him, because he comes in loud, but then he seems like a nice guy. Okay, you guys were you guys were fighting over a jar and then it smashed down onto the ground and he went to pick it up and it cut his hand. Okay? Are you ready? Yeah. And scream! Ah! Hey, open the door now! Ah! Hey, hey, it's okay, it's okay. Where's your mommy? Where's your mommy? Keep screaming. She's gone. She's gone, okay. What's your name? My name is Haley. Haley? What's his name? Wendell. Wendell, Wendell. Listen, it's just a little blood. It's gonna be okay. Would you let me let me wash that for you? Can I wash it out? Yeah. Can I wash that? What the hell's okay. going on? He comes in that, he comes through that door and he's gonna come right here. Okay. So should I have my gun back in here then? Yeah. So he sees it? Step him in. When I come back in, I see it's there? Yeah. I mean, is, will that work? Should that. we put him in behind Fine. you? Huh? Should we bring him in behind him? Empty. He's got nothing in it. And you can't shoot. That's good. Jesus. He's got a gun! I'm a cop. Lisa, are you calling? No, why? Just make sure he keeps his hand wrapped up so someone gets here, okay? Okay? Okay, you keep it right there. Thank you. Uh, okay, that's right. what it is. Yeah, perfect. Just like yep. that. I think we've been to the valley like four times in five years or something like that on the show. Three. Three times? All right, three times. Three times. And, you know, we wanted to feel like, like Lem was out of his element, out of the world, in the middle of nowhere. And this is in the middle of nowhere, and there are mountains all around and trailers. This is pretty cool. The shield, the, the way we do the show mostly is you walk in and what you see is what you get. And, and you don't try to do, I mean, there's a little redressing, but for the most part, we try to move in and go, yeah, this will work. Just move that table and get rid of that TV. Um, and so this, I mean, definitely, Lem's trailer, we walked into and uh, it was pretty much that. I mean, it was pretty nasty. What we had to do was get rid of the fleas and, and add, uh, add a bed. And that was pretty much the party. Um, this trailer was actually a little bit a little tiny bit more up and and they were neater than than we are but uh but this trailer was you know it is what it is we're in the trailer park example i can step on this because oh, okay. that's ours wait, wait, we should have huh? it. <laughs> maybe it's not i stepped on the furbies i think the furbies are ours <laughs> the only thing that belongs to the 
family is the puzzle and the hungry hippo. All right, we're not stepping on the hungry hippo. I'm not sure how it's done on other shows, but you know we sort of have a blueprint for a season as far as stories and what we want to continue and what we don't want to continue and what makes sense. Um, but a lot of it is serendipity, you know. A lot of it is just like, oh shit, if we do that. Remember in season three we had that guy who told Shane about the, you know. And sometimes, you know, it's such a vast world and it's such a rich environment, you know, where we shoot in Farmington, you know. And there's so many cast of characters that we've created over the years that it's it's sort of. You know, uh, it's 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 this weird sort of family tree that we can pick and choose from and connect storylines a lot. That's sort of a writer's job. I mean, what you really want to do is dig a deep, deep hole and throw your characters into it, watch them try to crawl out. Um, and I think we've dug ourselves a pretty deep hole here with these and, and, and thrown thrown these lovely people down on stage eight into it. You know. Of all the shows I've worked on, this is the one where the writer-producers are really the most forthcoming, you know, and they're, 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 but when it comes to, you know, what's going to happen and what's going on, they refuse to give you anything. It's got to be about Lem. Think they caught it? You know, Shane would need a good reason to do it also. I don't think Shane would just walk up and cold blooded kill Lem just because he thought he was going to rat, but I don't think he would need too much of a push to get over there. So we decided, okay, there's, he, there should be some misinformation, misinformation that Vic, if Vic got, he wouldn't kill Lem. But Shane, not being as smart of a cop as Vic, will kill Lem. So that's sort of what we knew. <laughs> I don't think I think we either have to have some missing, like sporadic, okay, cool. so that we can it's that. not obvious that there's just one gone. Yeah. There's a box of twenty-seven or something. Yeah, we're gonna have to we're gonna have to assume that you have already pocketed one outside, or he logged it in the evidence and, and took one out. Yeah. Yeah. Or when you're back. That's the reason why you're the one who's doing it. Falls in the store. It's a little yeah, heavy. That's kind of important yeah, because if, she, if he took it ahead of time, then he's sort of anticipating what happens. Well, we had a long discussion about that, and it's a gray, it's a weird gray area, but I think he's got it, not necessarily for what he does with it in this episode, but you never know. You know what I mean? But I think the question is, how many levels of subconscious was that decision to take that grenade? Do you know what I mean? Okay. Okay. I mean, so it's a, you know, it, it obviously it's a very tough week. This is a tough one, this whole thing. But, you know, so I, I just don't want to anticipate any of that. You know, we talked about it an awful lot, and I think it's weighed heavily on us um, over the last several weeks. And we know as professionals that we have to divorce ourselves from that, into, you know, knowing intellectually what's going to happen and knowing our characters don't and not anticipating and not falling into those sort of actor 101 traps that you can get caught in and, and, and just play the scenes and uh, make each scene the best that they can be. You know, every actor knows what's going to happen in the script that they, they do because they've read it. The challenge is living it for the first time on camera or on stage, whatever the venue is. Yo. Thank you. Get out of here. What do you want, man? Uh, sorry to break up the think tank. Snap. What do you want? A couple of your Salvadoran amigos went all uh, Superdome on a DEA parking lot. Turned a bunch of Crown Vicks into scrap metal. Start talking before he goes Superdome on your head. DEA's been up our ass. Busted our number two Osorio. Bosses sent a message to the feds. Yeah. Bang! I'm big on messages. In terms of how we got here, I mean, in a way, it's just perfectly logical. Um, you know, that's the cool thing about writing is that as you're going forward, you, you, it's like you're going through a fog bank and you have no idea where you're headed or, or uh, uh, and just the uncertainty of it is actually kind of 
um, mind-boggling and terrifying sometimes. But then when you look back, it always makes perfect sense in retrospect. And I think episode 11 um, is that. I mean, it, it proceeds directly from the original sin of this show and the pilot of Vic Mackey killing Terry. And everything that happens flows from that. It's just, you know, the consequences of the universe. He killed a cop, and it's the ultimate sin for a cop. Um, cops who watch the show, who love our show, say, well, I love everything but the fact that Vic killed a cop the first season. So we're answering all those people. And it's, ex it's exciting, and uh, it really is gonna change, it feels like it's gonna change the series from this point on. I think there are moments where, uh, you know, a series has to has to sort of pivot on itself, and I think this will be it. It's been a long day. It's a good day, long day. We tend to be very well organized. We get material to the actors early that allows them to prepare. In this case, though, you know, we we wrote this script really, you know, kind of on the fly at the last minute because we're sort of at the end of the season, and. The script came out uh, several days into prep, you know, which, which is uncommon. And then when we heard it at the table read yesterday, we were so focused on, you know, getting the, the Lem part of it right and the Shane part of it right and Shane's motivation for doing what he does, etc., focusing on all of that, that we realized that we were sort of Vic Light. That, uh, again, if, if, if what happens in this episode is a consequence of Vic's original sin, where is Vic in the mix? So we were here until pretty late last night, just taking a Vic pass. We just went through and looked at all the scenes, you know, where is Vic sort of picking his scabs about Terry and, and everything, and, and how can we link what we now know is going to happen in the script to be a consequence of Vic's actions leading up to it. I think we wrote some of the scenes with Vic being too passive. When I, when I heard it today, that, that, that I think we just need to see more of Vic's agenda, and, there's, and, the, and, and that there's a plan, and then when, Lem, when you realize Lem's on the run, or Lem's not where he was safe, now the plan's being accelerated. You know, we thought we were going to have a week or two to sort of do this, and shit, now he's on the run, but we're supposed to meet him tonight and give him supplies, but now we're going to have to move, but we haven't put all the pieces in place. You know, Ronnie, what are you doing to get those pieces in place? Shane, what are we, you know, let's, we got to make sure that not only is it about getting out of company, but it's about, it's about making a good life for him. Then. Right. And really, what's at the heart of it is, is Vic's emotion that he's in this position because of me. And we're going to sort of hit that harder that's right. That's right. and make that, that's, that, that's, and make that strong. That's what I'm alluding to, is that Which you would have played subtextually, I think, but we're going to sort of bring I, I it a little bit more to the that, surface. Yeah, okay. Good. I would say that this one, this would not have been an effective story the first season of the show. No. That this is something that you almost have to play in the fifth season. That you have to build a history. And and to me, this is the price that Vic and his guys pay for living a life of walking on the razor's edge. Mm -hmm. You know, and they've been able to fall on the right side of that razor the vast majority of the time. You know, through through skill, through wit, um, through sheer wanting it more than the people chasing them. And this is the price they pay, that you can't have a 100% success rate when you're living that kind of life. And you invite this kind of tragedy into your life. And you create this element and shroud of paranoia mm -hmm. uh, and suspicion that in a snap, in an instant, makes you do something that you will regret for the rest of your life. That's bullshit. Oh yeah, really? Is the Armenian money train bullshit? Because you gave it up. It's coming clean. Nothing to come clean about. It explains where your 65 unaccounted for thousand dollars, 65,000 unaccounted for dollars comes from. Look, he's scared, he's tired, and he wants his freedom. The DA said he's got to give him something on the team. Guess he agreed. Well, I would never agree to that. The DA didn't give him a choice. He has to give you guys up. You know, all this shit can blow back up on me. You need to, to get a message to him. You tell him to, to just shut the hell up. Can you do that? Can, if you could speak to him, could you get him? Could you convince him to keep his mouth shut? Yes. Great, then do it for God's 
Jesse. I don't know where he is. Captain, he's crazy. But with Lemansky unaccounted for, he's got the chiefs here, and now the DA is smelling blood, both of ours. I'm not supposed to be telling you any of this. But you threatened me. So now I've told you everything I know. Take care of it. Now we're coming to the end of season five. And uh, things have changed, especially in the, in the family. We, you know, we're having a death in the family. Uh, and about how we feel about, you know, is this, is this the end of the show? And if it's not, it's really a new show because of the, the cast change and chemistry and, and, uh, and feeling of what it is. And the wonderful part about it is that the story we've always started with is staying true to itself. And the actions we take have consequences. And our show is always honest enough to show those consequences. I think the fact that you're willing to meet her out here, motherfucking no one. I mean, look, they could have followed her. Yeah. They, you know, I, but I don't there's know. part of it that you're coming to her. The first thing you come to her with, and I think at the beginning you don't know where he is. He just said, come meet you to the park. So you're walking in, looking around, and he comes running towards you. You don't know what he wants or any of that. And, and he's going, I want to make a deal. And he thinks it's going to be over. So all of this, I think, is you processing going, I can't, I can't. I'm not going to be, you're on the run. Not going to happen. Sorry. And, and, and the, so even the, even the you adding stuff to what you've done, yeah. you thought up here. You didn't decide that before. All right. You thought, yeah. you thought turning yourself in would be enough. No, it's not. So I'll, then I'll so, plead the new right, stuff. I'll do something else. I'll, I'll give him all the shit I did. Shit we did. Look, well, he's not going to stop the cars me up and then come on, stop for a minute and think, okay, I'll do, I'll do the money train thing. Yeah. I know. Well, that's what I was no. going to do anyways. That's the stuff I had planned in my the back of my head, anyways, right? Yeah. Right. I mean, you, you don't know. I mean, you'll give them anything. You're right. Just going, Look, what do I they just want? didn't know she was going to be against you me. You thought like she this. would go. Right. All right, turn turn right. yourself in. Come on, we'll we'll I'll make a deal. I'll call you in an hour. Right. Okay. You know, in your brain, it's that easy. It's like you know, it should be. In, yeah. in, in actuality, it should be. I know the deal might not be as sweet as it was, but make a deal. So what's the point of this whole conversation? Let's walk. <laughs> <laughs> it's really just stalling for me. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're stalling. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, I thought I knew Stalling all for that. a hat. That's yeah, what yeah, stalling yeah. for. Right. I thought the pilot was unbelievable. They all are like little movies within themselves. You know, it's, um, I think it's the best quality on television. And um, I've met a lot of uh, big, huge movie directors and producers who all watch The Shield. It's very impressive that, um, all of Hollywood uh, loves the show, the, the writing, it's, it's unbelievable because every character is dealing with a couple of issues and conflicts within. They're complex characters and I think that's what makes the show such a success. This is all attorney-client privilege. Terry Crawley, was he? That's, you've heard enough, all right? I just did, I, I want to do my time back. You see if you can get me a deal, then I'll turn myself in, all right? I'll call, I'll call you in a few hours. Cut it. <laughs> <laughs> um, nice. How much uh, of this park do you control? None of it. <laughs> I mean, we control enough that we can say, you know, please Run. turn that CD, that CD off. Which right, we're right. going to. We control, you know, people can't come running up. We have police officers. But, uh, but no, this isn't ours. So there really aren't any extras here? Uh, there's Back some. Home. No, there's some. Because they have to stay the same. So actually, that that some of the basketball players are are people. Really? Yeah. Well, I can see one guy. Yeah. The guy with the green hat. I don't know. He's probably ours, right? Yeah. You think? <laughs> yeah. There's some that are. You guys belong there. Yeah. Oh, there's exactly. the other guy. With yeah, they're the two. Tank. Exactly. There's two guys. There. Two I think the kid with the red shorts probably not belong there either. Hey guys, I can't have you hanging out right now. See, they're here. You're watching it. Right here. He's asking me. You don't have to, absolutely not. But I mean, I, 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 can you guys please find somewhere else to hang out? No, though, it's actually, it's cool. As long as they don't look in the camera, it's all good. Um, and, and they seem very happy uh, <laughs> for now until they get bored and want to leave. And we go, you can't, because we've established you. 
And then we have the uh, then we have the gun fight. And they're not going to understand what you're saying. No, they have no. No, they got they got that they got that they're not supposed to look in the camera, and they're not supposed to uh, uh, talk. And and uh, hopefully that'll take us. You know, if I gave them a fatty, they'd be good. They'd be good. And, and, and you know, a couple beers, they'd be there all day. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. We'll see. You know, it's the the drama of the shield. <laughs> It's going to be hard. I mean, it, it, I, I don't think there's any two ways about it. It's definitely, it's, it's going to be hard, especially now that everyone knows what's at stake. So all the days leading up to it, that actual day, um, you know, it, 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 it's, it's going to be hard. I don't know anything else. But I think all of these guys, everyone um, will do it. Because like I said, I don't think um, that there's any resentment in any way, you know, I, I think everyone's sort of thinking, wow, you know, something that was sort of expected and then it's, you know, it was expected and we just, we've been fortunate that it's taken this long for it to happen. I, you know, um, the catch 22 of that is you just didn't want to see anyone in that core uh, group go and, and, and we don't, you know, they were kidding around in, in the bus when we, I uh, found out about it, talking about uh, a dream sequence. So, you know, maybe the writers will sort of sing to that level and write a dream sequence and <laughs> Lem will wake up and go, oh shit, all right, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I doubt it, but hey, all right. If they go to a season seven or eight, it's something to think about. I I guess I'm, I mean, I'm not a terribly sentimental person. Maybe maybe I am, I don't, I don't know. But but I, I it, it kind of snuck up on me is what I'm, what I'm getting at and, and how uh, how strange it is and how emotional it all is and I can't imagine what uh, what Wednesday night's going to be like um, because yes Dutch and Claudette are not working together but uh, Kenny's going to be gone and I, I know a lot of shows a lot of shows People come, they go, they get killed. It's all really part of the job. And there's a veneer of that around here, but uh, really, uh, we all started on something and there's a kind of a, a sense of, of, of loyalty, I think, that, that the, the writers feel to us and we feel to the writers and the actors feel to each other. And, let me put it this way. If the show were going to go on for another five seasons, I don't think they would kill uh, Kenny off. You know? It's sort of the, the, the story that is, the, the tragedy that is Vic Mackey. Well, we're in the fourth act. And it's a fourth of five uh, of the five Shakespearean acts. And, and it's, it's going to cycle to its conclusion. You know, so far, every season, whenever I thought I knew where it was going to go, it didn't go in that direction. So if they've got seven seasons of directions that you cannot figure out, then it's great. But I am quite lethal and cold-blooded about, about when it's over, it's over. And, you know, it's like, well, end of story, and off we go. I hope the rest of the cast gets to that, too. Just gotta remember, I'm like the old fart around here, so. <laughs> I'm just so, like, emotionally on the, on the end of it right now. This whole thing with Kenny, it's just, it's just totally got me. It's a different feel to the whole episode so far. I mean, usually, despite the fact that our, our content is always very heavy and very, uh, uh, you know, rough, and, and there's a lot of emotion to a lot of the stuff, it's really light off camera. People are joking and laughing, and uh, I think partly due to, to Lim's death and, and really to Kenny's future absence, it's not like that right now. It, it, one, the script is just really heavy, and every scene is, is heavy for us. I think, uh, I think uh, Jay Carnes and David Marciano have some really, really funny stuff in this episode. And the read-through, uh, at the read-through, I was shocked 
at how funny it was because I think I was just so focused in reading the script at all the tension of the strike team story and and the uh, and I had found out just the day before I got the script that what, what was going to happen in it and, and just feeling the weight of that coming that I think I didn't I didn't get when I just read it that there is a lot of you know, humor in this one too I'm a detective you understand I want the name of the owner of these machines right now, or you will be sitting in a holding cell for as long as it takes me to find those names. Such, let's go. Hang it up. Hey. You own those machines? I was just feeling you. Uh, this crew um, is a crew that, um, <laughs> you, you know, we, we shoot on the run. I mean, it's like a, it's like a pirate crew. We we do things, and they've been together for such a long time that it it's like an a, an elite unit that's seen the elephant, as they used to say in the Civil War. Um, these guys are very professional, and I I don't know who's seen what, but I, I guarantee you it's not affecting their jobs or what they're thinking about. Um, they're they're shooting an episode of the Shield and 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 doing a great job as always. Right, quiet, please read through. Yeah. Reading sort of quiet, please. It's really interesting. We're dealing with a, a script that really people got two days before we started shooting, and that's only select peoples, uh, peoples, uh, select people. Um, you know, only a choice. Uh, only, only a select few actually got the script before we started shooting, and there are others now. You know, we'll we'll be looking for a prop, and you know, someone will go, dude, I don't, I haven't read it, I don't know. Um, it's absolutely stressful in that regard. Um, it's also stressful because you want to talk about it. I mean, I'm eating, sleeping, breathing this storyline and and emotionally I can't help but get invested in it and I know that everyone here because it is the family that it is is also invested in it and everyone's intrigued and uh, and everyone has their own theories as to what it's going to be uh, which is kind of the interesting you know side of it but you know I'd like everybody to be a part of it and soon they will um, I'm, ass I'm assuming before we shoot it everyone will know what the what the final moment's going to be. It's Stephen Kay, director. It's been directing from the beginning, and I, I'm really tight with him, and they really want him to direct this, and he turned down a, a pretty big movie because they said, listen, we really want you to do this. This is a, a great episode, you know, and he just kept looking at me the whole table read. You know, yeah, just the whole thing, you know, and Michael and Walt just kept staring at me, so it was like, you're hitting me, like, you know, this is it, and this is the end of, like, this, and... Yeah, I mean, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it was, it was, yeah. Just felt compelled to just tell him, you know, how much I love him, and how much we're all gonna miss him, and and uh, and I think, I think, I think he got a lot out of that. So I hope so. I hope so. Cause we, uh, I've just gotten so much out of him. I think, we, I mean, we all have. Yeah. Well, I got yeah. the shotgun, right? You got MP5. We did the same thing we did in the warehouse before. Yeah, do, but well, but I, I, I'm gonna carry a spray gun in this one. I'm carrying a shotgun. The reason I'm gonna go with a shotgun is because if we're talking about numbers like this, and I, you know, if I have a sawed off, I can just spray the area. <laughs> you know what I mean? We, we're talking about being grossly outnumbered with three guys, and we have at least six, maybe more, that we're dealing with. You know, shotgun could be. A, a good weapon so of choice. And it's you want, shotgun. Yeah, you want yeah. lens shotguns, man? Is that what it is? Yeah. I'm okay with the first guy coming into the door with the shotgun. If you grab that and the other two with the MP5. Yeah, it's Lem shotgun, and that's the reason why I've right always preferred sure. the shotgun. This is Lem's gun, usually. Old sawed off. I would prefer the MP5. Because you could do the three round burst on them if you had to spray. Boom, 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 boom. You know, hit them that way. Yeah. But if you come in with a shotgun, it, 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 it's, it's one shot at a time. Yeah. One shot at a time. Uh, you can hit a couple guys. Yeah. You got six in here. I don't know. I think you could, you would move tactically. You would move better with. So the why MP5. do I have to be the first guy through the door? Well, no. 
You can, you don't? You can kick in the door and he can go in first. All right, I'll kick it. One of you guys going. Well, he goes around back. back. All right, I'll kick it. You go first. I'll follow right behind it. How's that? Fine with me. Send Ronnie. Yeah, yeah send Ronnie. Send Ronnie. If, if he comes in, well, we're outnumbered. Yeah, send Ronnie in first. Then you got to kick the door in, right? Wacky. Yeah, and then yeah, the door we just go down to the ground. And you're gonna have a guy standing right here, so you don't want to turn your back on this guy. And you just come in. You you can knee him in the back and just come right up on this guy. And then Chicky will be coming through, and Ben's gonna try to get away. Yeah, you clear him out this way. I got a shotgun, dude. If he's going to get up, yeah. I just give him a little pop in the, <laughs> in the top of the head, and I got him. On out. Bam, even if you go right, right in, you know. I got to get out of that doorway. I, it'll be, it'll just going to be sloppy. It's just a little sloppy, man. Now, we can do this here and, and change something up in there. No, no, I mean, I think if it's in the back, if it's that, and, you know, if it's the, whether it's the butt of the gun or his I arm. That's real. I mean, for somebody, I mean, that's a little... You know what I mean? Somebody coming out and just kind of getting the right. I think if it's sloppy and he comes out, go ahead, come out, man. Come on, you know. Oh, yeah, that's, that's what it is. That's exactly what it is. That's exactly what it is, right? You never know the situations that you're going to be in, and and that scene in particular was, you know, really kind of scary without the big fella, you know, doing that alone. And uh, and it feels different. You know, everything about it's different. I mean, the approach is different. Who's coming? The fact that uh, Ronnie and and uh, and Vic go in the front door, and you know, and, and talk to Stephen about this, and I was at the back door. It's, you know, bravado goes out the window, man, when you're alone, and you're 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 outnumbered. You know, at least two to one. Get down! Get down on the ground right now! On the ground! Get down on the ground! Put your hands in your head! Ha! Yeah, but let's go on your face. On your face. Come on, fat ass. Get up. Get up. Let's go. Hands on your head. Hands on your head. You know, and, and, and I can imagine the fear that, that, that police officers must feel going into those situations every single day. You know, so, so it's... Uh, yeah, it's it's an interesting thing to play and to ponder and think about. If Claudia is so hot at these guys, she can book them herself. We gotta go get a land. Yeah. I think every season we've tried to represent some sort of change, whether it be um, an emotional shift in a character, whether it be something in the environment that's shifted in the community. You know, season four with Glenn Close, we had the um, we had the whole uh, asset forfeiture thing and a new captain. So, you know, we try to infuse something that essentially becomes the engine behind some of the drama. Uh, and I think this season, um, the big change was obviously bringing in Forrest Whitaker's character. Under the disguise of business, I just really got to almost like play it harder because. It's just different coming in the middle of the night than it is coming yeah. like first thing in the morning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, yeah. So very respectful, you know. Like I woke her up. But then, I mean, I'll, I'll do it. It's just very, very different. It's, I just trying to see if there's some other logic. No, I mean the truth is, I like. Can we? Can we? And this this fucks us a tiny bit. But can we shoot the inside stuff now, and come back and shoot this outside stuff when the sun goes down, is and shoot the outside stuff as as you know, 4.30 in the morning, 5 in the morning, so that it is, you woke up, and it's on your time, you know? So it is still... So, so, so is, it, is it, so the time change is because you want it to be another day? The time change is because it's, it's now the beginning of, of this day, yeah. You know, move from episode, instead of right? the, I'm saying instead of an, an, the pretty, night before the morning. Right, yes. And there were just all kinds of questions. What happened in that time that we didn't feel like we were answered satisfactorily? Right. There's, a, there's a lot of time that went on. There's four hours. Of, you know, so if we condense that period, I feel like what happens is basically what we see. It was great working with Forrest. Um, he is, he's an intense actor. The storyline was very intense, and it, 
it really got intense at the end too as well. So it was, I loved going to work every day because every day I, I was challenged. I got to work with a great actor, you know, and it was just um, exciting for me to just meet the day head on and, and to work on these scenes with, with him. I miss him. Six awesome. o'clock in the morning, he walks into your house, which is, which is definitely awkward. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I think it's awkward. Yeah, good. It's awkward that I'm even here. It's awkward <laughs> yeah. that she's not dressed. It's I mean, yeah. um, that scene is very complicated. I think one of the most complicated scenes in the episode. I'm most troubled by it because I don't really know what I, what I did, what it means. You know, I just tried to play it honestly. At one point, I thought about playing the scene because it's easy and it is in the writing that I could play the scene as if I'm totally deceiving her, and I'm just trying to get information. But I chose to do it, lost, because he seeks comfort in her because I think that he sees her, not. Not trying to pay back Mackie. He's not trying to pay back Mackie. She's one of the true sources of good in the whole show. Everybody's got so much supposed duality, which is really just uh, like a guise for being bad. Duality when you kill someone is not really duality. If I shoot you in the head, you know what I mean? If I shoot a cop point blank in a, in a room like Vic Mackie did mm -hmm. to protect myself, there's no duality in that to me. That's just me protecting myself. Mm -hmm. If I allow a police officer to die like he does in episode like 10, I mean, a kid, I mean, a, a guy to die, I ain't begging for his life. There's no duality in my mind, you know what I mean? Yeah. So, from Kavanaugh's point of view, you know, mm -hmm. me going to her is me going to her. Because I just say to her in the scene, do you ever fight back? Do you ever, have you ever tried to stop him with everything you have? And I realize she hasn't. And it's inside of that moment that I realize that perhaps I will have to <laughs> condemn myself by crossing the line. The police committee is willing to consider a deal, but like I thought, they insist on adding more time. How much? Maximum of 10 years with parole in four if he turns himself in immediately. What about the safety issue? Well, he'll be held in protective custody until it's all sorted out. But there's no guarantee of location unless you can prove your claims. What about the others? No condition about him giving us something on them? We want to put this behind us. Now, if he's caught before he comes in, all bets are off. Excuse me. We, we had this idea for this IAD guy who was unlike any IAD guy you'd ever seen before on TV, who was sort of by the books and hard hitting and kind of a dick. And we kind of came up with the idea with his character of the hiatus and, and uh, I was talking to Sean about it in, in terms of who the character was and you know how his energy needs to be different and just sort of threw out you know, the idea thematically that, you know, he's a guy who needs to have like Forrest Whitaker's energy, a guy that's sort of offbeat, you're not quite sure, like there's always something else going on behind his eyes. Did he, uh, did he say anything? Yeah, the character of Kavanaugh, when I first, uh, when I first took the part, I told them that I was gonna go through a physical transformation as, as it became more and more intense and as I was going uh, after uh, Mackie in a deeper way. So each episode, you start to see him physically transform. And so what happens is, that, like the first time you see me, I have like facial hair, you know, I'm quite a bit, you know, heavier, I guess. And then I, I, I lose. And the next time you see me, I, I've, I've cut the facial hair off, I'm like cleaner, I'm starting to get more, I'm starting to get, I'm trying to get more and more disciplined on a line and more capable. And so what happens is as it goes along, you know, my, my, I shaved off my hair, my, my physicality started to change, my, my very essence and being becomes harder and stronger. You know, I think that he, Kavanaugh is somebody that when he, when he meets battle, it, it makes him stronger, it makes him more focused. And defeat, unlike me, for many, uh, for Kavanaugh, he sees as an avenue to try uh, to win. So it's, it's, it's exciting to to do this uh, transformation. I think that if I come, when I come back for the last two, something else will have happened. Something will have occurred. I, I, I'm, still, I'm still thinking about it. I have to read the script. And I kind of respond to the tragedies and to the 
that, that occur within the character. You know, we were lucky. I think Forrest, uh, you know, took it well beyond anything that we had envisioned, you know, as far as making it his own, making him, you know, kind of quirky and, um, and just, you know, compelling as hell to watch and, and a great foil for, uh, for Vic. Cool. I think it's fascinating if you, if you, if you dissect the Kavanaugh character and you dissect the Vic Mackey character and then you see, and then you see how their actions filter through into the brains of viewers and, and how viewers pick who's the good guy and who's the bad guy. A lot of people think of him as villainous even throughout the show. I don't understand how. People seem, you know, like people watch the show, I'm the bad guy, I'm the villain, I'm the anti-villain. But it, to me it's like, it's a statement on the character of, the, of, of, the, of uh, society. The truth of the matter was that Kavanaugh was a, a, a good cop. He just, he, he, he sensed that Vic had k maybe killed Terry. He sensed that Vic was a bad cop and he was, an, and he was doing his do job. He's an IED investigator. His job is to investigate and root out bad cops. And, and the, the truth about Vic is, any way you slice it or dice it, he's a killer. He's a bad cop. He does a lot of good. But you know, if 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 you filter out the if if you just go by the law, Vic's just a bad guy, and he should be off the streets. And so, amazingly enough, in as Kavanaugh was pursuing this guy and pursuing this guy and doing everything the right way, the the viewers just started to hate this guy and saw him as the evil villain. You know, and I always was amazed at that because you know I think part of our original intent with the Kavanaugh character was to sort of shine a light back on Vic. And, and remind viewers, Vic's the bad guy. I mean, it used to sort of be in the beginning of the show, it was 50-50. Half the people were like, I love Vic Mackey. Half the people were like, he's a bad cop. We got to get him off the street. And I think we got into this odd balance by the end of season four where it was like 90% of the people thought he was great and 10% 10, 10 of the people thought he was bad. So, it, you know, having the Kavanaugh character come in, maybe we could level the playing field. But instead, it became 100% people liked Vic and, no, and everybody couldn't stand Kavanaugh. This is the code that everybody has bought into and everyone thinks is okay. He's so good, he, his code is so strong with him and his warriors that his warrior in episode 11 actually puts a grenade inside of a car with his partner who's been by his side and been protecting him for years and years and years, who lives by the same code that Vic Mackey does. But that's what everybody likes. That's what everybody thinks is okay. But I am the villain. <laughs> Give you a break, dude. You know what I mean? I'm not, like trying my best to help society. I'm not trying to harm anybody. You know what I mean? All I did was like say, I want your office because you're not doing anything. You know, I got to clean up everything. You know, one of the things we've been dealing with this year is uh, Forrest Whitaker, uh, his character Kavanaugh is going after Vic Mackey. Really, he's going after him for the original sin of the show, the death of Terry Crowley, which happened at the end of the pilot. Part of the problem with that has been that it's old business. You know, someone may be a new viewer and not have seen that, or or it doesn't have the same impact. The fact that Lemonhead, is, his death, is now pushed into the center, I think it gives us a lot of new stuff to play for the next season. It puts, you know, Kavanaugh and Vic Mackey standing over that body. It has the new Captain Claudette Wims standing there, putting her best detective Dutch on top of that. We have Shane has this dark secret he has to hide. It just well, it's Vic looking everybody. for the killer who turns out to be his best friend standing right next to yeah. him. I mean, these are all things that are going to launch us into what we're calling season 5.1. Yeah. <laughs> it's just the final 10 episodes are coming after these 11 episodes. Right. So it just spins us out with brand new, fresh tragedy. You know, a, a new crime that somebody doesn't have to have a doctorate in the shield to understand. And, and, and I think it'll be a lot more emotionally resonant than... Well, that's the thing. It's, than, it's than all about Terry emotions. It's all yeah. about character and emotion. And we can aspire, and probably never succeed, but you aspire to the great Shakespearean tragedies of these things. You know, this is our Act 4, early Act 5 of this series. Mm -hmm. you know, and Lem's death is the thing that is propelling us into the conclusion of this series. And it's going to give... Vic so much to play. Right. It's going to give Shane so much to play, Claudette so much to play. So in many ways, Lem may be absent from these future episodes, but he's completely his at the ghost, heart and the center of his, them. His ghost will be there. There is value in, 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 you know, in telling you the plan wherever you go or whatever. It's like, no man, this is a fucking, this is a, this is beautiful. This right. is a beautiful, yeah. right. this is beautiful right. for you. Right. This is, I know you better than anybody, man. You're going to love this place. Right. 
You know, I'm, you know what I'm, and you know I can't what I'm, do that right because I've already I mean, got my thing. Because really, what you're saying well, is take this because that right. means you're still with us. Right. Yeah. But yeah. I, and I and I think what you just said is right. I mean, you genuinely do believe. It's a beautiful place. It's a pe as great as all this is. No, I mean, the flip side you of it, know, it, 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 brain, it's beautiful. Well, it is. But the most important thing is it keeps him safe. Yeah, 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 that's right. I mean, I mean, yeah. at the beginning of the scene, the thing you care about most yeah. is taking care of him and keeping yeah. him safe. Yeah. And then when he won't accept that, you think the worst about him, and now it's about keeping the other two guys safe. Well, tonight is the big scene where Shane kills Lem, and we're doing two pops before that where the guys are waiting and Lem hasn't showed and they're starting to get worried that maybe he's not coming. And the first scene we're going to shoot next is Shane showing up after he's killed Lem. He's seen his friend die. He was responsible. And he's got to sell it to his guys that, you know, I had a tail and I've been driving around and I don't know what happened and where's Lem. Hey! Uh, I, uh, I had a tail. It took me a while to shake it. Yeah. How late is he? Late. Yes. He'll be here. Yeah. You all right? I think as much as it's, as it's a scene about him selling to the guys, you know, bullshitting the bullshitters, Walt and I have talked about it. It's about him. It's about him commit. In, in a weird way, when you do something like this, when you commit an act like this, I think, and, and especially when it's, you know, someone that you love, I, I think, I think, Two thirds of the time is is convincing yourself that it never happened, and and I think he he is here trying to go. Ah, I didn't do that. I, I didn't. I didn't. That didn't happen. That was a blip. That was some kind of weird alternate universe, and it's not real. Um, and I think it's convincing himself that that he did it for the family. He did it for for it wasn't because it wasn't it wasn't to get himself off. It was to get. The, it was to take care of his wife and his family, and, and he did what he felt was the only thing he could do. And there's a lot of emotion with this guy, and I think it's going to be easy to give stuff away and harder to hold it in, but I think it's just going to be really powerful. And we're going to play these two, and then we go off to the other location where he actually kills him with a hand grenade. He did it. No! He's not coming. Maybe he had a heat on him. He had to hide. He's coming here. Or he's getting a message to us. We're going to give him more time. Big night for all of us, because it feels real now. And we've been talking about it, talking about it. And then all of a sudden, here we are. We're out in location. And the stuff's going, going to go down. So it's kind of exciting and kind of sad, too, because I've been thinking about Kenny and uh, us losing him. and. I hope we're giving him enough of a send-off, you know, for all the great stuff and all the friendship and, that he's given us. I think they just want to get, get on with it. I think the build-up is really kind of, kind of heavy, and and um, it's gonna be a, it's gonna be a long night, for sure. I would not be afraid of a huge monster pause after that moment. What do you say? Uh, I've got it figured out. I've got it figured out. I got it out. figured out. Where's Vic? I want to talk to Vic. And then he says his thing. It'll be, yeah. Do you know I mean, I wouldn't be afraid of Big Paul. And not saying, you know, uh, before it comes you know to the Mars maybe, maybe, you know, maybe, that's, we, maybe that's, maybe, you know, I don't know if it's, you know, maybe I'll, I'll I was going to say, there's why? your maybe moment. I'm down here tonight because it's a big scene. You know, usually I would say over the course of a season, I'll only intentionally come down and check out a scene two or three times a year. Uh, a lot of times I'll stop by set just to stop by, and, and if there's something going on, I'll watch and maybe weigh in a little bit. But as important as this scene is, uh, as many twists and turns as it takes emotionally and, and, and with what happens at the end of it, um, even though I'm supposed to be on a plane in about nine hours, I'm, I'm here at one o'clock in the morning <laughs> checking it out uh, to make sure that it goes all right. Um, you know, not that I'm worried because with Kenny and Walton, they're gonna make sure it goes well, and, and I have complete faith in Steven. But you want to make sure the little moments do well. So, you know, Kenny and Walton are on the way there for the scene, but the cameras aren't rolling, so until they do, you won't, you won't know for sure. What if, if I, well, you know, why did you, why did you come back here if you weren't planning on leaving? To see you guys, to see you guys. To see, and to me, that means he's, he's, he's wants us all in one place so that we're gonna go to jail. He's fucking, 
you're doing. Yes. Don't do this. And, 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 and take, and, but that's, that's a pause. Take that look and find that. Go, go, wow, he's fucking betraying us. But what I think would be great, whether it's turning to go to his truck or something, is for us to be able to see that look and see that moment without Len being able to see that look in that moment. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if it's, he said that and now I'm going back here and what the fuck am I gonna do? And you're able to be on him in a way that lets us access all that. That's pretty cool, yeah. Whereas, yeah. you know, he's yeah. just, uh, yeah. he just thinks Shane's frustrated. Yeah. Right. Yeah, but but let's not. That's under, interesting. Let's not that, you know what? That you know what? That, that's you know what? That's that, I, I, I can I. What, and, that, then, and then, okay. So so if we're if we're if we this whole thing everything is good here, right, Kenny? We're all good here. Yeah, yeah. We're walking around. Yeah, we're walking yeah, yeah. around. We're talking. Yeah, yeah. It's fine. You're gonna be miserable. The whole thing right, about right. the ranch. It's a ranch, right, right. man. It's gonna be. No, and I, you go back. Uh, I don't over want here. that. I don't want that. Look, I gotta figure it out. I do. I gotta figure it out. And why did you even come back here tonight if you weren't planning on leaving? It was just kind of like, like, like swimming in a damn lake where you couldn't see the bottom, and you, you and you, you had no uh, little rafties on your arm or whatever. For me, I mean, it was, it was kind of, you know, well, what, you know, what is he saying to me? I mean, what am I hearing him say? And wh why am I saying the things back to him that I'm saying? And it's really kind of understanding that, you know, what, you know, really understanding kind of where we are and the crux of this entire story, the history of these two people, and, and really kind of figuring out kind of in his mind, what is he thinking? And what has he done? Is it, who has he been talking to? And if he has been talking to them, well, then, then maybe I can still convince him that, that this is really the only way to go, you know, is to leave. And it's, it's the best thing for him. And not just for us, it's the best thing for him too. And, um, and that's where it was, uh, it was just kind of hard to kind of, to kind of find that. Um, I never experienced that on this show to that extent. And, uh, cause I don't think people know, knew what to say because there are no, there's no right answer, there's no wrong answer, there never is, but sometimes there are not as many options as, as we had in that, in that particular part of this story. It could have gone a million different ways, and, and hopefully, I think it did, you know, at the end of the day, but I, I think we have it. I think we have it. And, and now it's you trying to, now Mars now becomes you trying to talk yeah. yourself out of fucking doing what you Mars know pregnant you again? Yeah. Oh, shit. Yeah, three months already. But, uh, I wasn't supposed to say anything till next week, but... Uh, oh, God, dude. Congratulations. Congratulations. Yeah, 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 another mouth to feed. Wow. It's just gonna be laid up near the end, so I'm gonna have to... I'm gonna have to step up more. Man, I hope I get to see the little guy. You know, we usually try to have two or three money scenes an episode. And I'm always telling the directors, treat the money scenes differently than the other scenes. You know, we're gonna be a sort of breakneck pace show most of the time. And, that, and when we do slow down for scenes like this, you know, hopefully we're gonna grab, grab your attention because it's gonna be out of, out of character for the episode. What if Vic and Ronnie can't shake the tail? Um, Vic and Ronnie can't shake the tail. Then that feels like it should still be intimate right here, right? Well, you're going this to. This is so good right yeah, now. This yeah, yeah, this. Uh, uh, you know, maybe they double back to the barn. I'll go, uh, I'll go check it out, okay? Okay. Move your car so the, the cops can. Move your car, get it out of sight. Yeah. Get, it, get it out of sight. Yeah. Hey, did you, did you, uh, were you able to eat today? I brought some food for you. Coming into this scene, not knowing, I think, is the way it was supposed to be. And, 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 and it being awkward by Walton trying so hard to, to convince me of one thing and me having my mind set up, you know, but, but approaching it completely different ways and having two completely different things that, that we, we meant underneath is, um, um, uh, that's the thing that made it really awkward, you know, because 
I, I didn't know why he was doing what he was doing, but it, it, it was just awkward. And we were supposed to be awkward until we got to a certain point, and I think we both found a certain kind of resolution. You know, so, I, you know, I, it's an, a weird scene. I mean, it was a weird scene. Because we have to, have to, have to access both you guys and what's going on through your head. And I'm, I'm getting him. But now, you know, you turning away, getting away, and, and giving us some time to just be on you when you know he can't see you. Hopefully, will give us all that. You know, I mean, this is the scene. We're really, this is the scene of the show. This is the scene of the season. This is maybe the scene of the series. So, you know, so we're not going to rush through it. Yeah. So, okay. And the whole, uh, whole beginning of this, the, the, the thing about about Antoine Mitchell and and, um, and you. You're trying to save the fucking guy. No, I know. I, yeah, that's. The, the other, the I'm just gonna. This is all levels and and all of this, and all of this. Okay, that's wonderful. He was right. trying to save him. And it was really weird. I didn't even really know where we were. You know, it was kind of a nondescript kind of place to me. A placement, kind of nothing. And it, but I knew what was in my car, and I, and I just kept thinking, you're. I mean, you're not gonna do this. I mean, you're you're gonna do I this. I mean. I mean, you have, you have, but you can't, you can't do I this. Haven't done anything yet. All right, well, if you do it, if you do it, it's just, you well, know no. what? It's just temporary. It's not, it's not the end of the world. It's, you just, you just, you get, just throw it. And something's gonna happen, but it's not gonna, it's not forever, you know? Or is it forever? I mean, I, I just didn't, I didn't know. I didn't, I wasn't. I, I, those, all those synapses were not firing to give me the clarity at that moment. It just felt weird or off or awkward, and it was supposed to because we had two different things that, that we were kind of going after, and, and he was interpreting it differently than I was, and that's where I, I think uh, everything happens where there's misunderstanding of, of what we mean, you know? And I, I was just, there, there's something in my car, I need to go, get there's something in my car and I gotta go get it and what is it and then I, then I saw it it's like oh f that's a that's pretty serious but okay don't think about it don't even look at it it's not a problem don't even look at it hold it and then go and give him a sandwich and tell him you love him and just tell him you love him and touch him you know just and that kind of happened and I'm so glad that happened uh, because uh, in the rehearsal, it, it, it didn't, and I, and I didn't, nor did I go there in my imagination in the rehearsal either. It was a very kind of monotone, uh, non-productive <laughs> rehearsal for me because I was holding everything inside. But I touched him, you know, for a moment, and he felt so good. And he was like, he felt like, you know, limb. He felt like, like my strong partner, my bud, you know, and I just wanted to feel his strength. And you can feel it in Kenny's arms, you know, you can feel it, you can see it in his forearms, you see it in his arms. When you feel it, it's so solid. And and to kind of have that, like I'll never forget that feeling, you know, of, of touching of touching him um, before I threw the, the grenade. I mean, the end felt good. I mean, there were a lot of moments that were just really like connected at the end because, because on an emotional level, we both, we're very emotional for different reasons, but yet we had that same thing in common. And, and the way it kind of spun Jane. off and, uh, you know, kind of joked a bit about the sandwich and the food felt like we were back to being best friends. Like there was a resolution, everything's okay, you know? And then, um, yeah, that was it. Yeah, it was very surprising the whole evening. It was, it was hard. It was really hard. Yeah. You know, one of the interesting things that about Shane killing Lem is that Shane and Shane had watched how Vic operated all these years, and essentially, essentially, uh, Vic sort of set the map and the blueprint for Lem's killing. The difference is is that Vic's a much smarter cop than Shane is. Not only that, he's also able to understand the difference between a guy like Terry, who was just a new guy on the team, and a guy like Lem, who essentially was a family member.
And the truth is, if Vic was, would have been the one that would have met up with Lem, he would have found out that Acevedo was lying. He would have gotten through it all. Shane acted impulsively, essentially the same way Vic did with Terry. Transfer is denied. I need my best detective on this. I tend to take a longer view of these TV shows. I don't think of them as being things that, you know, the show as being something that's on Tuesday nights at 10, even though that's the lifeblood of the show. I tend to think of it as what will this show be and see in five years from now, 10 years from now, 20 years from now. Grenades, the thing this morning. El Salvador, the leader still missing, his name's Guardo. Start there. And this is something that, to me, is going to cement the character of Lemonhead and Kenny Johnson, who plays him. It's going to elevate him in the pantheon of the show mm -hmm. and really cement him in a, in a completely immortal kind of way uh, on the show. So while it's a short-term pain, you know, I think it's a long-term gain for both the show and for us. <laughs> the guys know the strike team will never be the same. They know their friendships are different. The series will never feel the same as it did. I mean, let's face it, creatively, this show works extraordinarily well. And I think that a big reason is our core strike team. And they have a lot of fun together. These guys are tight. They love each other. They're friends. They're cool. They're badasses. That core group will never be the same. Because Lam, who is arguably the sort of most easygoing, most fun, the guy who sort of everybody loved is gone, and these guys, as the season six progresses, will all wonder what their part was they, they played in his demise. Happy! Are you happy now, Detective Mack? Hopefully what it causes is this extreme tension within the strike team. It's got to create something extraordinary. Um, Vic's killed someone. Shane's now killed someone. So there are two now, two cop killers within this team. Ronnie hasn't killed anybody, can still plead. You never know who's gonna turn you in. You know, you know I think it now causes that looking over the shoulder, you're gonna turn me in. Well, I've got something on you, you've got something on me. He's got nothing on us. You know, it creates a lot of, a lot of mystery, doesn't it? So the question is, how does his death affect the other characters? Does it change them at all? Does it make them, you know, do, do they take on, on, on levels of that character? And, and I think you just have to really focus really hard to figure out how it affects them and, and, how, and hopefully how it affects the other characters in a way that's not expected. We don't know what the next 10 episodes will hold, but, but we like the questions that get asked by this final episode. You know, we have faith in ourselves that we'll be able to find what that path is when the time comes. But yeah, you close one door and you open another, and then you see what's inside that room. I don't know what, what's inside that room, but I'm just glad that we came to a room that had another door in it. We're gonna find out who did this. Who we're gonna kill him. Life is about change, you know? Things always change, you know, obstacles come in different directions. And this is just part of that too, as an actor in in, in the you know in the storyline. So it's all great. And Michael and Walden and myself said from like the very beginning, we go look, we have such a strong bond that you know, 50 years if we live 50 years, 30 years, whatever after the show, we're gonna be sitting together, drinking like we do, hanging out like we do, and just laughing like we do. And we will, we will. I mean, we're all that close outside of here too. So it's like. You know, created a great thing for everybody, and what 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 more awesome, you know, thing is that in life? That's it's 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 all good. It's all good. All right, the gates are clean. Pay attention, everybody. Just real quickly, want to thank and acknowledge the finest, best television crew in Hollywood or anywhere else. It's really our best season yet. Uh, just want to say uh, some raps on some actors here. Paula Garces, whoever you are. David Marciano. Forrest Whitaker. Michael Jace. Benito Martinez. J. 
because I wanted to get to our last guy, a man whose uh, dedication and professionalism and friendship, especially over these last four weeks, I've really come to admire. And I'll always call you my friend, and I love you, and we all do. Kenny Johnson. Yeah. Yeah. You guys, for four and a half years now, have been my family. And, you know, and I, I, don't, I don't take it lightly. When I have to get up at 4.30 in the morning, I get excited to get up. That's not like me. I love coming to work. I love being around this crew. I consider you all my friends and the cast. Uh, you know, I mean, a, a, every one of you, you know, and I, I gotta say, you know, living, living the strike team, for the last four years, I've, I've, I've had the most incredible relationship and friendship with, with, with these guys. And, um, you know, I couldn't be happier to be a part of, 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 of the Shield, you know? And I couldn't be more proud of, of, of what Sean and the writers created and put out there into the world. And I feel so blessed, uh, you know, to, to be able to have done that. And I love you guys more than you know, you know, I mean, I feel a little numb right now because I know I have to go and, you know, I've had a, a little bit of a hard time knowing, knowing that, but, but beautiful things are ahead for everybody. And I'm just, again, blessed that I got to be a, a part of something also now that's going to catapult into the, the next 10 and gives you guys wonderful stuff to, um, to play with. And uh, I, I love you. That's it. You know, I'm, I just love you all. So thank you. Go Shield! <laughs> Thank you, son. Thanks,